Good evening. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Come on in. Come on in this evening. If you can hear me, let me get a thumbs up in the chat. Praise God. Good evening. So excited to be here this evening. If you can hear me okay, please give me a thumbs up in the chat. So I know that you all are hearing me okay. Praise God. That's what we're going to call the mic check. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Mic check. Are we good to go? Can you all hear me? Let me get thumbs up if you can hear me, please. Can you all hear me? Can I get a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that thumbs up. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to New Beginnings. Praise God. As you can see, thank you for that, Rochelle. As you can see, I am not Bishop Wright nor my Pastor Leslie, but I am uh, Minister Dorian Cooper, and I will be bringing you the word this evening. Praise God. Let's get right into at this morning, this evening. <laughs> Praise God. Let's just start with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you right now for your word that it goes forth unhindered by any satanic forces. We thank you, Father God, that I decrease and you increase. Have your way, Father God, that your word may speak to the hearts of your people, your uncompromising, holy and infallible word. We thank you for this and many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen, amen, and welcome to New Beginnings Wednesday Night Live service, as I was saying the youth. Uh, before we get started, don't forget December 31st, 10 o'clock p.m., 10 o'clock p.m., December 31st, we will be in person service. Our New Year's Eve service. Amen. We are going to have an exciting time. We are going to get a word from the Lord, from our bishop that is going to catapult us into 2023. And if that wasn't enough, afterward, we're going to have a big, huge breakfast. You all know we have that huge gym. And we are going to take full advantage of it because we are going to have a huge breakfast right after service. No need to go to IHOP. No need to go to Waffle House. Spend it in the house of God and fellowship together after we receive our word with a nice breakfast in the name of Jesus. All of those that will be there Saturday, December 31st at 10 p.m., just give me a show of hands. That's everybody in the comments. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We are so glad to have you. Now let's get into the word this evening. I'm going to start this evening uh, with my text scripture. I'm coming from Luke chapter 2, verse 40, and then uh, verse 52. After I uh, give you my text scripture, I'll let you know what the title of this message will be. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and follow along with me to Luke chapter 2, verse 40, and then we're going to drop down to verse 52. And I will be reading both from the King James Version and also the Amplified. Praise God. And the verse 40, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now, the Amplified Version renders it thusly. And the child continued to grow and become strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, 
and the grace, the favor, the spiritual blessing of God was upon him. Oh, amen. 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 Now let's drop down to verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And the Amplified Version says, and Jesus kept increasing. Oh, we got to pay attention to that word kept. Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and in stature and in favor and with God and men. The title of my message this evening is allow Jesus to grow up in your life. Grow up. We have to allow him to grow up in our life. Praise God. Saturday, Bishop talked about Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. And in order for us to fully appreciate that gift, we have to allow him to grow up. We have to allow him to grow up in our, in our life. Jesus is no longer a baby in the manger. He wants to be so much more in our life. But we have to let him. We have to allow him to come in. So how do we allow the Lord to come in? How do we allow him to grow up? How do we allow him to be more in our life? Well, we have to grow in the knowledge of him. Bishop used to always tell us if he's a $2.50 God to you, then that's what he will be. He will be whatever it is you need him to be. Oh, but we want him to grow up in our life. Praise God. First uh, Peter uh, 2, 2 says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that we may grow thereby. Oh, see, because if we allow Jesus to grow, we grow. Because we grow in him and he grows in us and we grow together. Praise God. But it's our perception of him. It's our knowledge of him. The more knowledge we have of him, the more he grows up in our lives. The Amplified Version says, like newborn babies, you should look, you should long for the pure milk of the word. So that by it, you may be matured, nurtured, and grow in respect to salvation. Now, that's your ultimate fulfillment, praise God. And 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear that we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Oh, how are you seeing Jesus this evening? Are you still seeing him? Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Are we still praying the sweet baby Jesus? Or are we allowing him to grow up in our life? Are we growing in the knowledge, in the depth of who he is? The Amplified Version of 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, we are even here and now children of God. And it is not yet made clear what we will be after his coming. We know that when he comes and is revealed, we will as his children be like him because we will see him just as he is in all his glory. Oh, praise God. It's so much more to him than just a baby. We have to allow him to grow up in our life. We have to let him grow up by longing for the sincere milk of the word, by getting to know him. Bishop used to always tell us we can know of him or we can know him. Oh, I want to know him this evening, praise God. The more we appreciate him, 
the more you receive him, the more he will become in your life, in our lives. The more acquainted you become with him, the larger he will become. Oh, praise God. He wants us to be more acquainted with him. But we have to allow him to grow up. We have to allow him to become the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the shepherd and the lamb, the wounded one and the healer. We have to allow him to grow up from the manger. Now, we just celebrated Christmas, praise God. And, 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 and some of us may have uh, uh, spent time with family, both near and far. Maybe you've had family that you haven't seen in a while. Or, or you, you, you reacquainted with them. And if you're like my family, you may have heard, oh, you're getting so big. Oh, I remember when you were just a little baby. Or, oh, how you have grown. Think about that. When we say that to our children as, as, as parents, Oh, you're going to always be my baby. But we got to let them grow up. And if we have to let our natural children grow up. If we have to let our natural family grow up, how much more do we need to let Jesus grow up? You know, the Lord reminded me as I was preparing for this uh, word this evening. I remember I moved to Mississippi in uh, 1999 and, uh, and wow, I left my family, my sisters, my mom, my dad. I left everyone there and I came to Mississippi. Best decision I ever made, by the way. But um, I, my baby sister, I'm 15 years older than my baby sister. And I don't even know if she remembers this or she's watching. But um, I remember when I seen her and I said, I said, oh. I just can't believe, look at my baby, look at my baby, look at my baby. You just all grown up. You just all grown up. I said, uh-uh, you just have to stay my baby. And she told me, she said, Dorian, I can't stay a baby. You got to let me grow up. And the Lord brought that back to me. Because how do we have to let Jesus grow up? If we still seeing him as that baby that was laid in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, then he can't be our savior. He can't be our deliverer. He can't be our healer. He can't be our Lord. We have to allow him to, to grow up. Think about, think about, think about Mary and Joseph. Uh, 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 go with me to Luke 2. We're still in Luke 2. Uh, verse 42, Luke 2, verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, uh, and 12 year, years old in that day was the age of accountability, age of accountability according to the Jewish law. So when Jesus was 12 years old, they went to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast, verse 43. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposed him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they saw him among their kinfolk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass, verse 46, that after three days they found in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, I saw thee sorrowing. The Amplified Version says there that they were greatly distressed and anxiously 
looking for him. And Jesus said unto them, verse 49, how is it that ye sought me? Would ye not know that I must be about my father's business? Basically, Jesus saying, what you looking for me for? Don't you know? I got to be about my father's business. You got to let me grow up, mom. I'm at the age of accountability now. I have to be about my father's business. And, 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 and think about it from Mary's point of view, because see, we just can't read the word and not visualize. I wonder if, if Mary, if Mary and Joseph felt how they felt when they found Jesus in the temple, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. I wonder if they looked at their 12 year old son or if they saw their baby that was wrapped in swaddling clothes. I wonder if, if, if as she searched for Jesus in this great anxiety that she was in, uh, that, that Mary heard the words echoed from Simeon's prophecy about her child's destiny and the sword that would pierce her side. That's Luke 2, 34 through 35. I wonder if she and Joseph were struggling with letting go and allowing Jesus to grow up. I wonder if we sometimes have that same struggle. Jesus is growing up. He's no longer a major baby. He is in his father's house and he is about his father's business. And that means things are changing in him. And things have to be changing for us. Because Jesus knew who he was. He said, why are you searching for me? There's a famous quote from Mark Twain. And it says, the two most important days in a man's life are the day they were born and the day he finds out why. <laughs> well, Jesus found out why, praise God. He found out why he was born. Bishop told us Saturday that Jesus will become whatever you allow him to become. He said he's the gift that keeps on giving. And if he keeps on giving, we have to keep on receiving. We have to keep on growing. We have to keep on yearning. We have to keep on longing. For the word so we can stay acquainted to him. So, so, so he can be supersized in our life. Praise God. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's not a baby. If you need peace. Allow him to be Jehovah Shalom. Your Prince of Peace. If you need healing. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the bright and morning star. He is the lily of the valley. He's your bridge over troubled waters. Whatever you need him to be. Are we longing after him tonight? Because it's, it, it, it's not just about Christmas. It's about that he grew up. So now we have to let him. When we think about Jesus, when we were told, when it told us in the scripture that there's going to be a sign and it will be a sign for you by which to recognize him that this baby is going to be laid in a manger. Luke 2 verse 11 and 12 says for this day in the city of David there has been born for you a savior that's one born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord the Messiah and verse 12 and this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him 
you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And we got so caught up with the sign, praise God, that we missed the first part. That there will be born for us a Savior who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. What if he stayed in a manger and he never was at the right hand of the Father? See, how are you, how are you seeing him? How are you allowing him to grow up? Praise God. If he's no longer the baby, but he's the king of kings and lords of lords, what if, what if he went from the child that was born to the son that was given? The child that was born, that's the sign that the Messiah, that our Savior is coming. The son that was given is Jesus on the cross. And everything that happened between then is all ours, our righteousness to that cross. Our deliverance, our healing, everything that we need in him. If we allow him to grow up, if we seek him, if we long after the word, if it's not enough to know about him, and the more we get to know him, the larger he will become in our life. What do you need from Jesus? Do you need your bills paid? He'll be your financier. Do you need healing? He'll be your doctor in the sick room. Do you need peace? He'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. He'll be Jehovah Shalom, your Prince of Peace. Do you need your mind regulated? Do you need your heart to be healed? He's a healer of the broken heart. What do you need from him? Allow your desire of him to increase. Supersize God in your life, praise God. I was reading an article uh, from uh, Rick Warren, and those of you that may not be familiar with Rick Warren, he was, uh, he is the founder of Saddleback Church, and he is also the author of one of my first books that I read when I was born again, which was The Purpose Driven Life. And, um, and he was talking about Christmas, and he said, if Jesus had never grown up to do what he did, he'd have no power to transform our lives. But the baby born in Bethlehem did not stay a baby. Jesus grew to manhood. He modeled for us the kind of life that pleases God, taught us the truth, paid for every sin we commit by dying on the cross, then proved that he was God and could save us by coming back to life. Oh, this is good news. You see, he goes on to say, Christmas is not the, the end or the finish line. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of new life. When you take that baby Jesus and let him grow into your savior. We got to allow him to grow up. He's no longer a baby in a manger. It tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We have to put them, we have to put away Childish things. We have to grow into the sincere milk of the word of God. I can hear the word is where we're trying to get to. 
if you want to if you if you want to see Jesus turn and every time he turns it's a different part of him that you see every time he turns there's a different a uh, 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 revelation of him there's a there's a different part of him that you need then you have to allow him to grow up you have to gain and grow in the knowledge of who he is you have to desire long after the word of God to allow Jesus to grow in you. And as he grows in you, he'll become bigger to you. And, and, and you see the posture of growth, <laughs> it has no expiration date. So no matter where you find yourself in life, Jesus can still grow in your life. You just have to allow him. You just have to allow him to grow up. This, this time of year, we, 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 we reflect on, on and celebrate the birth of Jesus. Oh, but wouldn't it be interesting to find out how people really viewed Jesus? How your children view Jesus? How your teenagers view Jesus? Do you still see Jesus as a baby? Jesus is no longer laying helpless in a manger. He grew up. He grew up. He matured like us, except he did it without sin. He is in his father's house attending to his father's business. Our images of Jesus must grow up as well. There's nothing that he cannot do. I think that's a song. There's nothing that he cannot do. I won't try to sing it because I'm probably out beat. But there's nothing that he cannot do. There is not one that he cannot be. He's a mother to the motherless. I can testify to that. He's a father to the fatherless. You see, every time he turns, my God, you see a different side to him. Get acquainted with him. Receive who he is. Allow him to become. When your knowledge, when your experiences and your relationship with Jesus grow and mature, you will see him in a different light. You will see him from a new perspective. He, will, he, he can even change death from a dying experience to an entry into a glorious experience. He, 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 he can change the, the cares of this world Oh, what a longing for the world. Allow him to grow up in your life. Allow him to grow up. I was listening to a, a, a song, and I've been listening to it all day. I'm not going to sing it, don't worry. But it's by C.C. Winans, and it's called One and the Same. And it's an old song, but uh, just I'm just going to read a, a couple of the words. She says, how shall I begin a God so high and mighty and yet closer than a friend? He grew up. The beginning and the end. She said, the mystery of his holiness and the wonders of his humanness are one and the same. She says one name can't do him 
justice. The holy man who bore my shame is also the one that is the whole, the great I am. Oh, she says, how can this simple servant be called the great I am? How is he both the shepherd and the lamb? Because you have to get to know him. You have to allow, we have to allow him to grow up. And once he grows up, we'll see new facets of revelation knowledge. We'll see where he fits into every aspect of our life. We will see that he was the child that was born. But he was also the son that was given. Oh, when we allow him to grow up in our life. When we allow him to grow up. Jesus is no longer a baby in a manger. He wants to be so much more. And we have to allow him to grow up. We have to allow him to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We have to allow him to be Alpha and Omega. We have to supersize him in our life. He's not just a baby. He's so much more. Allow Jesus to grow up in your life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let him grow up. Let him grow up. Let him grow up in your life. Allow Jesus to be everything you need him to be. And you may say, oh man. You know that 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 sounds so good and so simple and 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 I understand what you're saying but I don't know Jesus like that. And that's okay. That's okay because tonight is for you. If you are here under the sound of my voice and you say I want to get to know him for myself, not for nobody else but for me then what I want you to do is just simply repeat a prayer after me. Say, Dear Father God, come into my heart, come into my life, and save me now. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that I am right now born again and that heaven is my home. Lord, do something wonderful with my life. Amen. And just like that, just like that, you are welcomed into the family of God. And all of heaven is rejoicing, praise God. Just like that. You're allowing Jesus to grow up in you. Just like that. And now you can get more acquainted with him. Now you can get into the word and get to know him at your level. At your pace. Run your race. Praise God. And as you do that, Jesus will increase more and more in your life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All of heaven is rejoicing over those that have just received Jesus. Praise God. Or you may already be born again and you just need to rededicate your 
life back to the Lord, you can do that as well. Praise God. He is a very present help in your time of need. All you have to do is reach out and receive. And while we are on the subject of receiving, let's receive our offering, praise God. It is offering time in the name of Jesus. Praise God for offering time. Yes, we get excited when it is time for offering because we know that God will, there is a seed that will meet every need. Praise God. Felicia always says, there's a seed to meet every need. And that just sticks with me every time. Because it's true. Everything you need really is wrapped up in your seed. In Malachi 3, uh, 10 and 11, it tells us, Bring ye arms that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And then he goes on to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, that's good news. See, as, as we get to know him, as we allow him to grow up in our life, then we can trust him, praise God. So go ahead and get that seed together because we have, we have three ways that we can give. We can give through PayPal. Our PayPal is newbeginningsclc.org. Or we can give through Cash App, New Beginnings, plural, CLC. You know, you put the dollar sign in front of New Beginnings, plural, CLC. Or you can mail it in. Mail it in to P.O. Box 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi, 39232. And let's just go ahead and pray over that offering in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word says that if we give, you'll give back unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And that you will open up all the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that there is not room enough to receive. So, Lord, we thank you right now for every seed that is being sown, that it will meet the needs, Father God, of the kingdom. We call our church, Father God, paid in full supernaturally in the name of Jesus. And we say that every person that is sowing a seed today, Father God, every household that is represented today, Father God, will receive a blessing, Father God, that is poured out upon them, Father God. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, part of allowing Jesus to grow up in your life is to be a giver. Jesus, we learned Saturday, was the gift that keeps on giving. Well, then we have to keep on giving as well. Is, is more blessed to give than it is to receive. If we keep on giving as we grow up, we'll realize that it will come back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, and running over. Men will give unto our bosom. You can trust Jesus with your seed. So give from a cheerful heart this evening and allow the Lord to grow up in your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me reiterate, praise God. We will have New Year's Eve service. In person, New Year's Eve service. Saturday, December 31st. Saturday, December 31st at 10 p.m. You do not want to miss it.
right after service, right after we get a fresh word from the Lord that is just going to, I'm telling you all, just going to catapult us into the new year. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. If you want Jesus to grow up in your life, spend time with him. Get well acquainted with him. Get to know him. And we can do that. Start your 2023 off right in the house of the Lord, receiving a charge from our bishop of what the year 2023 will bring. And then right after that, I'm telling y'all, nobody does it like new beginnings. I'm telling you, nobody does it like new beginnings. We have... First of all, our, our, our facility, praise God, our church, praise God, came equipped with a huge gym that we have used to be a blessing. And we are going to keep on using it to be a blessing because right after service on December 31st at 10 o'clock p.m., right after that 10 o'clock p.m. service, we're going to have a full-fledged breakfast, not a continental breakfast. But a real breakfast immediately following service where we can fellowship. Where we can fellowship with one another and talk about the goodness of the Lord. The expectation and the anticipation that we have of growing up in him. And him growing up through us. Amen. Amen. That's right, December 31st, 10 p.m. in person. You do not want to miss it. Jesus is no longer a baby in the manger. He wants to be so much more in your life. So let him. Amen. So let him. Praise God. That is the end of our Bible service tonight. Praise God. I am going to end on time, before time. Praise God. Because we do things decent and in order and new beginnings. Praise God. And because I want to continue to get to know him <laughs> and grow in him. He's no longer baby in that manger. He is the, the son that was born. He's the child that was born and the son that was given. Go ahead and receive him in your life and then allow him to grow up and do far above you could ever hope, dream, or imagine in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful night. I will see you all Saturday at 10 p.m. At new beginnings as we bring in the new year. Until then, bye bye for now. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen.